Welcome to our presentation. Today, we would like to compare the difference between Shangri-La Asia Limit and Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. Now, let our group members introduce themselves respectively. Hello, my name is Dorothy Liu. Hello, my name is Pan. Hello, my name is Ben Li. This is Patrick speaking. Hello, my name is Ken. Hello, my name is Yvette Zhang. And I am the group leader, Teddy Mai. The process of our presentation is to first introduce the methodology of collecting company data and background, and then analyze from the company background industry analysis, financial analysis, and SWOT analysis of the two company. Two company. Finally, give the recommendation on the highest investment value in the long run and conclusion. To begin with, our aim of uh, group project is comparing the difference between Shangri-La Asia Limit and Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. As for collecting their company data, we try to use Google website to search their statement of financial position, income statement, balance sheet, and so on. Interestingly, those data can be easily found in stock website as they are listed company. However, we felt that the data of we found on the stock website was not detailed enough. Therefore, we went back to Google. Regarding to the background information, we signed in their official website uh, separately and we realized more background information about their organization. Okay, let's pass the microphone to Dorothy to introduce the company background of Shamila Asia Limited. Let me talk about the introduction of Shangri-La Hotel. Shangri-La Hotel Group is belong to Hong Kong List Shangri-La Limited. Since the first Shangri-La Hotel in Singapore in 1971, Shangri-La Hotel has been constantly moving towards the world. Besides hotel operation, it has three other assets. Property leasing division, property sales and other sources. In order to better meet the consumer demand and market demand of different customers, four different types of hotels have been opened. Shangri-La Hotel and Resort Hotels, Traders Hotels, Carry Hotel and Hotel Gym. In terms of sources, it can be clearly seen from the table that's from 2017 to 2018 the comprehensive income has increased. In 2018, the comprehensive income of the group's hotel property is affected by factors, such as the opening of new hotels and large-scale renovation in 2017. So the hotel environment has been greatly improved attending more people to stay. But at the same time, the Philippine government shut down the beach repair, resulting in the closure of hotels. Parts of the turnover was damaged. Let's move on to the industry analysis. First of all, Shangri-La is one of the most famous hotels in the world. Its main competitors are five-star hotels that also win by service. Shangri-La Group is a third-part service industry which has its own management mode and system. Shangri-La design has always been famous for its beautiful landscape and strong traditions of the Asian culture hall. And then Shangri-La based on the gradual improvement of Asian markets. It has gradually moved forward to the European and American markets, making Shangri-La start to expand globally. The most important thing is that Shangri-La Hotel make use of its good market reputation and its own ad advantage to submit it is into five-star hotel and four-star hotels after its success in the market. For maiden and and high-end hotels, the two complement each other and better improve the market comp comp competitive power of the hotel. That's all. Thanks. And um, let's move on the microphone to Pan. Okay. Thank you. Let me talk about the financial analysis of Shangri-La Asia. First one is the pro profitability. Gross profit ratio increased from 59.1% to 64.14%. It can be seen that the market 
prospects are good, enterprises have higher economic earnings. Then, operating profit margin. The operating profit margin decreased from 8.51% to 7.17%. The enterprise is highly profitable, but uh, the operating profit margin may be reduced due to the increase in costs and expenses. Next page. Net profit margin. The, the net profit margin increases from 7.22% to 7.65%, indicating that the company's profitability is improving. Then, return, return on total asset. Return on total asset increased from 1.16% to 1.45%, indicating that the company's profitability is good and uh, its competitiveness is enhanced. Next page. Liquidity. The current ratio is from 1.067 to 1.11. We show that the in liquidity Equity of the enterprises mm -hmm. as assets increases and the short-term debt repayment ability also increases. Quick ratio. The quick ratio decreased from 1.0573 to 1.9797. The short-term liquidity is tightened, but uh, the quick ratio is close to 1 to 1. The company's liquidity was still acceptable. Next page. Activity. The average collection period decreased from 19.45 days to 15.7 days. It shows that the ability, ability of enterprises to repay debts has increased, increased. Total asset turnover. Total asset turnover increased to 19.11% from 16%. It indicates that capital turnover speed is accelerated and the capital utilize, utilization is effective. Next page. Leverage. The debt ratio rose from 51.71% to 52.2%. 7%, but the total liabilities are going down. At the present, it's beneficial to the development of the company. Then, times interest earned ratio. The times interest earned ratio decreased from 1.88 to 1.71. Long term solvency declined, but the remain normal. Remain normal. Then, major changes in big financial figures. The company's growth margin increased by 5.04 percent from 2017 to 2018. It can be seen that the company is developing in a sound way. Stronger profit profitability, higher economic returns. Thank you. Uh, it's time for Ben. Yeah. Thank you. And let me introduce you the accessibility analysis. Uh, the first part I want to uh, talk about strengths. The first part is internationalization. The group's hotels are distributed around the world. It will not cause the local hotels to fail to operate due to the impact of local economic and environmental problems in a place. The, Second point is the major employee training system. Uh, with the huge fund behind it, not only can the hotel hard work facilities be consistent across the country, but also a unified file, but also a unified file employee training system to achieve the consistency of soft power, so that consumer can enjoy in hotels around the same quality service. The second part is weakness. And the first part is high initial investment. Each new hotel is built in straight accordance with high standard, which inevitably 
face the problem of high investment. The hotel itself lends and new equipment such as beds, bedding, lighting, and other furniture must be counted as initial input. The new hotel will have fewer guests in the initial stage. Even the shot, even the Shangri-La brand can avoid this problem to a certain extent. So it will lead to a longer return period. The second point is high operating costs in Shangri-La hotel group. Operating costs should include unit utilities, employee fees, rent, and so on. According to information, there are about 30,000 employees on the Shangri-La Hotel Group. The, uh, the average annual salary of the Asian hotel industry is 69884 RMB. Every year, Shangri-La Hotel Group pays employees about 210 million RMB. Then, it's Opportunity Park. The first point is high tourist season. The hotel industry is always closely related to the tourism industry. Every time the peak tourist season comes, the hotel industry will usually in its peak season. During this period, many family and friends travel together and the Shakura Hotel is for high income people who travel abroad. The second point is revenue consumption. After each economic reception, the industry will resuffle and a large number of companies will fail due to problems such as broken capital chains. By the time the economic recover, consumers will experience a wave of big season due to explosive consumption. The final part is food. The first point is of season tourism. Next, next page. The first point is off-season tourism. When there is a peak tourist season, there is an inevitable of season tourism. In the low season of tourism, revenue inevitable decrease, but the face operating costs of the hotel have no change. The second point is global economic crisis. Under the global economic crisis, all work of life are affected. Problems such as rising raw material price, broken supply chain, rising employee fees and rent, and so on are emerging. In this case, this industry that are not required for consumption are the most affected, such as tourism and hotel industry. Please move the microphone to Patrick. Uh, uh. What is uh, Mandarin Oriental? Actually, is a hotel that belongs to the Mandarin Oriental International List. It started up in 1963. It is a famous hotel all around the world. And underpainting everything we do on a basic, on a day, on a daily basics, it would be the guiding principle of Mandarin Oriental hotel groups. It means that through the excellent service and extremely high quality of the room to fulfill the satisfactions of the guys, of, of, the, of the guests. Also, its management method would be an important piece of being success, emphasizing the importance of team working a lot. Mandarin or Ho Oriental Hotel Groups has been recognized consistently in influential global public Occasions as an uh, outstanding hotel company. Also, it, it acquired numerous awards, for example, Spice Diamond Awards 2019 from, from the American Automobile Association. As for the sustainability of it, it is committed to contributing the communities in which we operate and responsibly managing our environmental impacts and social com uh, com commitment. As for the Mandarin Oriental Hotel Groups, the environment and the community efforts are decided to make a positive difference in the world in order to ensure a future that offers the same opportunity for the fulfillment that we enjoy today. As for the data analysis,
it could be easily noticed that the total assets of Mandarin Oriental International List is two billion in 2017. Interestingly, it has been rising 0.09% in 2018. As for the gross profit Mandarin, as for the gross profit aspect, the Mandarin Oriental International List earned around two billion in 2017 and it's also increased about 1.5 percent over a year it is also worth mentioning that the greatest increasing proportions of of it, it will be the its operating expense which is around 8.2 percent however the there is only one aspect that is presenting a decreasing portions, which is the cost of sales. To be more specific, it declines slightly, approximately 0.15% during a year. As for the next table, it would be the descriptions of the profit of Mandarin Oriental International List, List Limited. Obvious, obviously, the first items would be the income before tax. In 2017, it could be easily on that it is decreased around 10% within a year. Coincidentally, the decreasing percentage of the net income of Mandarin Oriental International Limited is perfectly two times of the percentage of the income before tax. Eventually, the total revenues of Mandarin Oriental International Limited in 2017 is climbing up about 0.47 percentage during the whole year. As for the major competitions of hospitality, and it it could be noticed that it is very relatively intense. More specifically, the service and the facility and the reputation, which is brands of the hotel would be the most particular point of competing with each other, with the others. It is also noticed that the Mandarin Oriental Hotel groups is surprisingly realized that the, in realizing the importance of this certain com competitive point Therefore, the successful of Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group is established in purpose. It could be definitely hard to maintain this performance for a long time. So, so let's move to the next part. Um, okay, let me introduce the financial situation of Mandarin Oriental. First of all, is the profitability. The company's gross margin has a small increase for this point of view. Cooperate earnings can also have a small increase. The operating margin is rising steadily, which in indicate that the enterprise is stable in operation and has central, central profitability. But the company's net interest rate fell Possibly because non-operating expenses increased from the year before and ROA also fell. The main reason is earning available for common stakeholders have an obvious decline. The total assets increased, which leading to a fail in the over ratio. The decline shows that the company is less competitive than it was the year before. And now we look at the liquidity. As you can see, both the current ratio and quick ratio of Mandarin Oriental reflect the shape decline of its debit-paying ability. And the date of both ratio have declined it, which is unfavorable to the department of the company. This is due to a shape's increase in the current receivables portion of long-term liabilities in 2018. This reflects the large amount of debit. The company has a replay, which may, which may expose the company to debit service risk. And then there's the active 
act here. <clears throat> here we can see that the range connection, connection period has increased. So the account receivable have also increased, which leads to the shortage of funds in the company and a decline in total capital turnover turnovers suggest that the company may be facing some op optional problem, which may be a shortage of facts. The data as the whole indicate that the company will have finance problems, which may lead to difficulties in operation of the company. And the last is the leverage. The company's, the company's debit ratio debit rate was lower in 2018 than in 2017, but the real test is not so good. First of all, total debit and total assets both went up, but since the assets went up a lot, the fin final range went down. For other day, we can see that the sort of soft company is weaker than that of the year before last. If the company continues to carry debits, it may have an impact on the operation of the company. Next, we give the microphone to member six. I am member six. Now let me analyze the SWOT of Mandarin Oriental Group Limited. Because of the success of this company, I focus on the strengths, opportunity, and external threats compared to other hotel companies. Mandarin Oriental or Hotel Limited has strengths in customized and high quality services. With the development of the technology, the hotel has installed smartphone technology. It can record the data that the customers already use it, and it will set automatically when they come again. The company is famous for their restaurants, spa, and so on. Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group Limited is a hotel group with the most Michelin stars, and the spas of the 12 hotels were confirmed by four being in 2019. The second advantage is the particular culture. In order to show the oriental tradition of the company, it uses fan as their logo. According to the report states, the symbol is one of the most recognized signs recognized in the global traveling industry. Every hotel not only has the same logo of fan, but also have unique designs through the color and patterns. The unique design associates closely with local characteristics again, such as local culture, geographic environment, and so on. Like the Tokyo Mandarin Oriental Hotel, it shows Japan Bridge in Tokyo to reflect the Japanese culture. It makes the customer impressive. Let's move on to the next slide. The third advantage is opportunity in tourism. We can pay more attention on the following graphs that service consumption accounts for 46% in the whole GDP, and tourism is one third of the service cost consumption. However, the company faces some challenges. I will use Hong Kong to do an example. In 2018, because the hotel industry had unstable future, an office building could learn more. A hotel has closed and built an office building in 2090 to now. Because of the epidemic spread, the occupants rate only a single number. The board of the company should reduce the salaries and working hours to control the cost. Let's pass the microphone to Teddy Mai. Thanks for speaking. In the uh, recommendation and conclusion part to find out the difference between two companies, we compare the company background, industry and analysis, financial analysis and SWOT analysis. According to above information, we can see that a Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group was set up in uh, 1963 and Similar Asia Limit set up the first hotel in 1971. Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group mainly focus on global business, with Shamila Asia Limit focus on uh, Asia Pacific and slowly begin to build hotel around the world. As for the investment value in the long run, we need to consider mainly about the net profit margin, current ratio, debt ratio, 
return on total asset and total assets turnover during the year 2017 to 2018 in Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. The net profit margin decreased 1.9% to 7.1%. Current ratio and debt ratio reached 0 0.5 and 43.44%. In addition, the return on total assets and total assets turnover declined 0 0.7% and 2.09% to 2% and 28.16% respectively. Moving to the same year of Shamila Asia Limit. All of those data increased. Uh, for next profit margin, it increased 0 0.43% to 7.65%. Current ratio and debt ratio increased 0% by 1.11 and 52.3% respectively. What's more, re return on total assets and total assets turnover occupy 1.5%. 4.5% and 1.91%. Uh, 1, the percentage of net profit margin and current ratio of Shamila Asia limit are higher than that of marginal uh, Mandarin Oriental Total uh, Hotel Group. Most of the percentage are higher for Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group, but because it is cur uh, current ratio is 0 0.5, they will have difficult in the payback of short run liability. Therefore, I recommend that investing Shamila Asia limit is better in long run. There are the uh, reference part. That's all of our presentation. Thanks for your attention.